Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Bordos. I am Bordo and this here is Surami Fortress. I brought you all here to demonstrate my latest creation, plate mail or plate and mail or as it's more commonly known, uh, Bakhtar armor, specifically Kalinada, this is Eastern European uh, knights or bagatir armor uh, and uh, it is a famous fortress I, I would I'd like to showcase it in front of. Mektarama, or as I like to refer to it, plate mail, was a popular style of armor across Eurasia, from Poland to Japan. For some reason, it, it didn't catch in Western Europe, being overshadowed by West's favorite plate armor which evolved into its own tradition of armor crafting in later years. We of course associate plate armor with European knight, and this is Eastern European version of knight armor used by Polish, Balkan, Georgian, and... And the bagatirs who famously protected Kiev from evil barbarians, as you can see history repeats itself, uh, same uh, barbarian horde with their magic dragons or atomic bombs or whatever attacking uh, and invading the uh, holy city of Kiev. And uh, Bagatir's brave heroes, even from Georgia, famous the Georgian Legion, uh, are fighting to protect it. So, in that spirit, I would really like to dedicate and showcase the Bagatir army. Funny enough, those invaders spread this style of armor from Middle East to Central Asia, popularized by Mongols, Persians and Turks in the Middle East, traveled through Arab world into the North Africa, it spread to South Asia, in India, Southeast Asia with Philippines, and even to East Asia like Japan. And of course even to Caucasus, Eastern Europe, Central Europe and the Balkans. <laughs> This here castle was built multiple times, and it? But every time the keep was rebuilt, in few years the fortress would crumble into ruin. Uh, nobody knew why this uh, castle uh, never stood its ground more than a few years. And one day, one famous um, knight or hero or champion decided to sacrifice his life and entomb himself in this castle. Uh, because some weird witch told him only way uh, this castle would stand if you sacrifice your life. So the mad lad willingly sacrificed his own life and buried himself into the foundation, knowing that his sacrifice would protect his homeland. It's a tragic tale of self-sacrifice and how our nation stands on those young men who put their lives into the foundation of our nation. A famous Armenian director from Georgia, Sergei Parajanov, made a hauntingly beautiful film about this legend, called The Legend of Surami Fortress. It's a tragic tale of Georgian history and the people who had to live through it in its darkest days. It's not a popcorn flick and not something modern film goers would be used to but it's a work of cinematic and visual art and something that any film lover should experience. You should definitely check it out and pretend you understood it. It's a cinematic classic. To me, this type of armor symbolizes the true face of Eastern European night. Yep. Both societies are based on similar fundamentals of Christian virtues and chivalric ideals, but unlike Western and Northern Europe that only had to squabble amongst one another, us Eastern Europeans had to face up unstoppable barbaric hordes and insurmountable imperial domination. While the West squabbled over who was more Christian and whose king had the poofiest dress, us in the East had to face off existential annihilation, especially after the fall of Constantinople. 
exceptionally those of us who stood on the edge where the continents met, like the Balkans, the Caucasus and the Caspian steppe. This also stems uh, to the ideal of uh, Bagatir, um, as I got inspiration for this type of armor for. Bagatirs were the elite soldiers of the Kievan Rus, brave heroes and knights who faced off barbaric invaders from the steppe. Those heroes serve as foundational myth of Kievan Rus and the Eastern Slavic nations such as Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. Bagatirs are like the knights of the round table or Charlemagne's paladins. They embody the knightly virtues of the people. Most famous examples are the great three Bagatelia, Dobrynya Nikitic, Alyosha Babovich, and most famous Ilya Muramets. These semi-mythical heroes are Druzhinya of the King Vladimir I of Kiev, and the knights of the King Arthur, but in some aspects they overshadow the king himself. Name Bagatir comes from the Turkic Bagatur, but it might have an older Indo-Iranian or Scythian origin. It means a hero or a brave warrior. Words spread to people they came in contact with, like Georgia named Bahadur or familiar named Bagaturia, and many others. Funny how Slavic heroes are named after their greatest enemy. Keyword here being Bog, meaning God. It's like the later version of demigod hero from classical Greek mythology or Georgian Devgmiri. Being from post-Soviet bloc, I grew up on those heroes, particularly film about Ilya Muramets being my favorite. That's where I was inspired to make this armor, to embody the heroes of old in this very difficult time. I feel like the mythic tale is being replayed in the modern age. New set is staged, but the place and the story is the same. Now Russia is in the role of the barbaric despots attacking Kiev, and once more heroes of Ukraine and all its allies are gathering to protect it. In the tale, uh, Kiev, heart of the Kievan Rus, is being besieged by barbaric invaders. A crippled peasant is cured of his ailments and travels to the capital to do his duty as a bagatir and protect it from evil. It's funny how many things line up. First, Ilya battles Salavei Razboini, who kills people with his powerful whistle whirlwind. Now we have Salaviov, a soulless propagandist who blows hot air. <laughs> The resemblance is uncanny. Then a ghoulish golem of flesh. A pagan picture so perfect. Around your presidential campaign on both sides that I prefer not to comment about. We also have a thieving army, corrupt despotic leadership, greed and malice running through their souls, soldiers treated as worthless meat, massive but useless army, cruelty and lack of human value. Constant threats of powerful weapon of mass destruction. This time a multi-headed dragon Zmei Karinich. Sent only to create carnage. Давай, сука, падай! Ух! 
никогда не пойду больше к Киеву. Вы оставьте ту гармонию хоть на семена. Ой, богатырь, не спеши! Весь народ судить должен Калина. Отвезти его в Киев, шефкам! Чтоб собака не сбежал, зажай его в пуля хаянна! And as it was, so it shall be. Justice shall prevail, and all will be good once more. All right, let's get back to the nitty gritty and the details. So, um, back to our armor, as or as I want to uh, popularize it, plate mail basically consists of mail here and plates. Uh, older styles of armor either had plates or on top of mail or uh, only mail or only plates. This combines both parts to create a more elastic, less uh, heavy because you would imagine wearing plate armor and uh, mail uh, would be quite exhausting and hot and bothersome uh, and encumbersome. This co combines these uh, two bits to create a more flexible, uh, it's not as flexible as chainmail of course, basically it improves both parts of more flexible than plate armor and more sturdy and resistant to damage uh, than mail because as you all know piercing weapons uh, such as this go through mail quite easily and the uh, plates basically uh, play a part in stopping piercing weapons. Most common Bacta armor covered only part of the chest and all of the back and it was mostly male. Some others were actually more plate than male. Also the size of the plates varied a lot as well. There are two types of uh, Bacta or plate mail construction which is one uh, this type of uh, layered, uh, like scale armor, layered plates, which uh, gives you far better protection. It's far uh, less easy to get through the plates uh, than uh, when you're dealing with scale. But this uh, type of armor's disadvantage is that it's uh, a bit less flexible than, for example, the second style, which is uh, plates hold together by rings. I try to showcase every pattern variant possible. Smaller plates are more flexible but distribute less force and create more weak points. Overlapping plates are more protective but far less flexible. This style of arm braces stuck around and became far more popular even in male arms. Making this helmet I tried using multiple different styles, but made the top of the head too round. Speaking of round, I cannot mention my favorite style of plate mill that has such a unique shape and design, and almost comes close to later plate armors in its size of plates. So. I don't know, as a Georgian, how long uh, could I ignore and not talk about this? Uh, basically, I wanted to start making these videos far sooner than I saw, started. But uh, when the war broke out in uh, Ukraine, uh, when Russia invaded Ukraine, it uh, broke my heart and I fell into a depression. I didn't know what future Georgia hold, I didn't uh, know what future Ukraine and basically the whole world uh, hold. But then uh, I decided to, what the hell, let's risk it, let's show uh, my art and my creations and not uh, be uh, frightened and encompassed by fear because that's what they want. That's the terrorist regime uh, wants to instill fear in us. But I believe that heroes of old, like Ilya Muramets, defended uh, Kiev from barbarians and 
<clears throat> defeated all their forces, even the great uh, Zmei, uh, the horrible dragon. We, people, true heroes of Eastern Europe, will defend against the barbaric hordes, defeat them and their evil flying uh, machines of terror, like uh, the heroes of old and heroes of legend. Omergers, 